one more video in the Cloudberry Explorer segment of this video series. In this video, you're going to learn how to share. Share your Amazon S3 files with others, that is. So play nice with others and get ready to learn a whole new layer of functionality for your Amazon S3 account. In prior videos, we talked about setting permissions on the buckets or folders or files to have just any old Jane or John Q public have access to them. And, you know, by generating URLs and posting those URLs elsewhere for people to gain access to the videos or the downloads and whatnot. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about setting permissions and creating buckets for other Amazon S3 account holders to have access to both read and write to upload and download to and from those particular buckets or folders. And the main reason why you'd want to do that in this example anyway, and who knows, maybe after explaining it this way, you might see how it might fit with your particular business model. But in this example, we're going to be talking about a membership site. And let's say I have a membership site where each week or month I provide my customers with a digital download of freshly excuse me, freshly created ebooks. And typically what happens, and this is basically what happens with just any old type of membership type site, and that is that I upload the completed products, zip them up, I upload them to my web hosting account, or in this case an S3 account, generate the URLs, provide those URLs to my customers via the membership site. They would then take those URLs, download those products to their computer, do whatever they do with them, upload those finished products to their S3 account or web hosting service, and then provide those URLs to their customers and on down the line. Now, maybe one day that's going to be the old way of doing things, because what I'm proposing here is the new way of doing things. And that is, I create the products, I upload them directly to the customer's S3 account. We're saving a lot of steps here. And once they are on the customer's S3 account, they can directly move them to their customer's S3 account. So there's really not much touch in anybody's computer except for the originator. And that would be, in this case, me. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this. Number one, it's kind of a two-step process. You have to, your, your customers have to create a bucket or a container for you to upload your information to. And then you have to create a doorway of sorts on your S3 account to gain access to those buckets that were created for you to have access to. So let's go ahead and, and on this example here on the right pane, we have customer number one. And on this side here, we have my computer. So let's go ahead and on the customer one, they're going to create a bucket that allows me to have access. That's going to be a one member dot owner and again you can name them whatever you want the key thing is is that the owner or the membership site owner the guy that's going to be sending you the stuff to customer one has to know the exact setup the exact name of that bucket they've got access to so let's first you create the bucket name it whatever you want and then you want to gain access to or you want to set the permissions for the person to have access to this. Now you can do that by right clicking here, come on down to ACL and then left clicking on ACL settings or you can always come up here, select it again, come up here and the one with the key. You can just select that, uh, left click on that, left click on ACL settings, same thing. Now then what you want to do is, because right now the only one that has permissions is the owner of that particular bucket. Now you can go here and select authenticated users and you can see that nobody has permissions here. Click on read or whatever permissions you want to allow. I suggest never providing information or never providing full control to other people. It's just totally up to you and a personal preference is just that my, that's my two cents worth. So I'm going to give the boss man, the membership site owner, read and write privileges. Click on apply. Are you sure? Yes, thank you. Okay. And then let's tell the, the membership site owner the name of this. Now then, the membership site owner goes to their S3 account. And they need to create an external bucket or the doorway. And right here, the green cube, just left click on that. Specify bucket name or URL. Well, the bucket name is a one member dot owner. A1 member dot owner and click on OK give it a sec boom now this one here and that's one of the other cool things about Cloudberry Explorer is the graphical interface the way that it looks a little bit of eye candy never hurts right but anyway this and you can tell it's a different 
a, a look than the existing buckets. This is an external bucket, the green cube with what looks to be a happy face. And then this is my doorway. Whenever I open this up, it's just as if I am opening this up on customer number one's S3 account. So now then, bye bye customer number one for now. I go back to my computer and I go ahead and locate the completed files for this particular segment of the membership site. So I've got an ebook I'm going to upload to A1 member, um, to customer number one's S3 account via this external bucket. So I navigate to the location of said file that I'm going to upload and I simply left click. Whoops, I've got to open that bucket up. Let's open up the bucket first and now then left click and drag it on over. You can also, I'm going to cancel this, you can also just once you've got it selected, click on copy. And it's intuitive enough to where it knows where to copy it to. It's the only other place to go. Now if you click on move, it's going to take this and move it over there, not leaving it here. So that's why you want to copy it. Unless of course you just want to move it and then in which case you're not going to be able to send this to any other customers because if you have other customers and hopefully you do with your membership site then you can just open up these tabs here and go to let's try this customer here and of course they would have to set up the same bucket setup and you would have an external bucket created for them as well and then you could just uh, select and of course it's not allowing you to copy because there's no buckets over here but you can do the same thing and just set as many tabs as you have customers you open up to expose their particular external bucket that they've created and that you've created on your S3 account your, your doorway and then you can just select click on copy select click on copy for each and every one of these okay so hopefully that's understandable but let's get on back here because right now we're in the uh, external bucket a one member dot owner and we've got this selected and just left click on copy yes and done now of course it's not showing up there right now but you click on the refresh button boom there it is now then again if you tab to another external bucket representing the doorway to customer number two's bucket for you and another tab for customer number three's external bucket or doorway for you and so on and so on you just keep on doing that right on down the line and before you know it instead of you sending all these to your s3 account and then providing each one of these customers with the url to then download to their computer and then upload to their s3 account you save them a lot of trouble and hassle. Now then, we have this on our customer number one. Now again, this can be representative of as many customers as, as you have. So let's go ahead and let's go on back here to our customer. And this is the bucket, okay, that we have uploaded to. Because this is my this is the membership owner right here that has the external bucket the doorway this is the actual bucket right here so let's open this up and see if what I uploaded here is actually here there you go so that's just representing the the power of this external bucket now then we have customer number one now then customer number one can do the same thing with all of their customers and just repeat this process without ever having to download it to their computer now of course if they're wanting to make any adjustments or personalize or brand that particular product before they send it to their customers then yeah they're gonna have to download it to their computer to do that but in essence though this process has saved a whole lot of time a whole lot of money insofar as getting the original product to the customers and hopefully you can see how this can benefit you and your particular business model. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on sharing buckets, folders, and files. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.